Have you um, ever wondered, was Dr. Martin Luther King really the Dr. Martin Luther King that uh, the media and your schools portrayed? It's, it's, a, it's a really good question. And we're going to answer that for you, but we'll be right back. Don't go to nowhere. <laughs> Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Too Strong, where Too Strong is always better than one. First, let me inform you that we changed our time. Second, let me apologize to Lori for not informing her, but I see she caught on real fast because she's in the chat room. So Lori, don't beat me up. We be, I'm crazy. I'm, 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 I'm going crazy. Something is wrong, but I'm going to be all right. It's so, old age. It's old age. It it's old. See, look, look, yo, it's gray. It's gray up there. I got a little gray. Corey, I've, I've, look, I'm going to tell you some advice. Uh, since I got to this old age phase before you did, okay, <laughs> embrace it, brother. It's okay. Just, no, I like just, it. no, no, just welcome it. It'll yeah. be good to you, okay. Just I'm welcome trying to it. get a little bit, a little bit more, so I can have that salt and pepper thing, John. Oh, hey, hey, get a shaker like, too. It's, it's clumping in one spot. You see how I do? Yeah, see? but hey, look, you might end up getting that Superman streak down the middle too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you never know. You never. Know. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I hope this. Uh, so listen, y'all. We changed our, our we changed our time so we can move some things around, and it's and it's really um, hopefully, hopefully it's gonna work out for us. So we're still on the mix, uh, at the same time. And Neil is back. Neil is back. Yeah, Lori, Neil is back. And um, I didn't get a chance to check him out, but Marlon said he is on point. Like he on he, point, bro. He ready. He look refreshed. He look clean. Oh, he ready, huh? Yeah, he looked mature. Like he looked like he grew up a little bit too. It's weird. Like. <laughs> Now we need to grow up because we just... nah, nah, because we never said we needed to. Oh, okay, that that's the difference. We always really? said we childish, so we have to stay that way. We got to stay childish. No, we're gonna stay childish. We're gonna stay childish. I can't help that one. Yeah, we're that, too old to change. They can't teach you an old dog new tricks. We, yeah. we can't, we can't do it. Sorry. Hey, so, so look, we're gonna get into this, um, Martin Luther King thing, and um. I think we got some pretty good information. I know Marlon, mm -hmm. I might have a little something jumping off you. Yeah, I'm, I'm the dummy, so. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> like, like that. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> but look, y'all, let's run a commercial, our sponsor for the day, and we'll be right back. Check it out. Introducing the sweetest addition to your cupboards. Be favored. Be favored. The honey parlor features four irresistible flavors. Southern apple pie for the sweet tooth in you. Organic elderberry, packed full with antioxidants. Little Hot Mama for the adventuresome with a penchant for heat. Or Tropical Paradise, help your palate escape the norm. Each jar is carefully made with the best ingredients to ensure top quality and outstanding customer experience. Be favored. Our products will leave you wanting more and are extremely affordable. Please feel free to check out our website. That's be-favored.com. Yeah, that is a, what's up. And I'm, I'm going to speak on this before Merlin get to it, because really, for real, for real, I'm a little bit, got a little little bit of attitude, kind of, a little, I mean, my feelings a little bit, because he got some flavors that I didn't. Um, but but she, but she called me, though, and told me she's going to hook me up, too, so you can do all that funny looking stuff you want to. But I'm telling you, and I'm telling y'all, out of all honesty and realness, that honey. They, they bad. They bad. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. They, Marlon, can you do us a favor and put uh, put the link in the comment section. Yeah, they they bad that, man. That honey is ridiculous. I'm talking about ridiculously good. And the candles, um, you know, all you gotta do is put them in a room and they smell. You know, and when you light it, oh my goodness! So trust me when I tell you, check them out. And we're not just saying that because they sponsored us for the day, but no, we tried them too. Yeah, we we tried it and and. You know, and, and, and I want to say this for the record, too. We're not going to advertise things that we don't believe in. If if somebody sent us and want us to advertise something and a product is not good, then we're not we're not doing it. Sorry, because we, we want to have that reputation for promoting good product. And this is by far the best honey I've had and the best. They, they got man. Listen, would you would you agree that she got the Yankee candles beat? 
Uh, yeah, hands down. By far. And and that's hands crazy. Down. I'm a Yankee man. I don't want no more Yankee cameras. I want hers. So check her out. <clears throat> so with that being said, let's get on with the show. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share it out, share it out, like it, like it, share it out. Yes, thank you, Lori. The link is in the chat. Y'all check her out and get your order today before I order it all up. Um, my TV doesn't show too strong only on my phone. Oh, your TV will show too strong. But anyway, so let's get into what, what we got on King, man. Where we what's up with the dude? Um, for a long time, okay, and this is why growth is possible for people, okay. For a long time, history had me fooled into certain things that I did not want to listen to. Okay, so like they portrayed a certain version of MLK that was really appetizing, really great. And you never looked into a certain aspect of him because it never crossed your mind to because they told you he was a reverend. And the way he spoke, when you're in a different mindset about God, it sounds really good, like really good, but it ain't really good. But when we started to look into what he actually believed and more and more information started coming out about who he actually was, things really, really went sideways for me. But it made more sense to me at the same time. So we have this um, introduction to Mr. MLK as a civil rights leader, and he was all about the uh, upliftment of African Americans and getting them their equality and blah, 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 blah. The problem is that they never told you who he was actually working on behalf of. Um, and that was where the problem came in for us as we found who he was actually working for. Now, whether or not you believe the, the FBI or the CIA or any of those people because they have information about him, I'm not even going to touch what they think. I don't even care what they think he said and who he, they think he was working for. I'm working on his own words as to what he was about. That's all we're going to work on is what he said. Um, now, for being a so-called preacher of the Baptist faith, I would dare anybody to go find one instance where MLK preached the gospel. Just go find, just go find one instance where he preached the gospel. If you can find that, Too Strong will send you a check personally. You show me where he actually preached the gospel. He never preached the gospel once. In fact, he learned from a certain individual named Benjamin Mays. Benjamin Mays was also a part of the Baptist movement, but he was always part of the what you call the Black Pride movement. Um, the Black Pride movement is what eventually ushered in this whole Black supremacist movement or the uh, pro-Black, wokey woke black seminary mindset of beliefs. Um, not once did Martin Luther ever espouse the real gospel. In fact, he actually said in his own words, this is his words, mind you, listen carefully to his own words. Um, let us continue to hope, work, and pray that in the future we will live to see a warless world, a better distribution of wealth, and a brotherhood that transcends race and color. This is the gospel that I will preach to the world, a social gospel. I don't recall anything like that in Jesus's wheelhouse. <laughs> um, it was about him and not social justice. I know people like to say, you know, Jesus was a communist and God's all pro-communism. Good for you. Um, if that's what you believe, but you've got to be a special kind of slow to believe that. But his own words was he does not preach the gospel. He preaches a social gospel. Um, and Benjamin Mays was his main kingpin for doing that. Um, now, Benjamin Mays is a very interesting character because in a lot of ways, Martin followed him like almost to the T. Um, Mr. Mays was married twice um, and then had a child out of wedlock with a third woman um, and he kept 
the wife a secret from the third woman. <laughs> so <laughs> ain't nobody knew about the wife the second time. But he went ahead and had the kid with the woman that he was seeing on the road. He was, mind you, he was on the road preaching. And uh, they say it was a brief encounter, brief enough to have a baby. Um, Jesse Armstrong Mays was the name of the child. But he kept the second wife quite a secret. And so the future life of Martin Luther King actually lived that out, too. Um, you can find this quote in his letters to his wife, Coretta Scott. Uh, there were multitudes of letters that he wrote, and they're all there in the Martin Luther King Institute. So you can go find them, his original writing, nothing doctored. It's all his handwriting. You can go read it yourself um, from 1950-something to the end of his time. But he wrote um, a whole bunch of letters to his wife. And he wrote a book about the advocate of the social gospel. So it's not hidden anymore. So... I agree, Jane. You're muted. People need to stop putting men on pedestals. Absolutely. I agree, too. Um, but how that how that happens, we, we need to understand how it happens um, in order to possibly prevent it, prevent it from happening to more people. Think about we should have knew as kids that Martin Luther King was not all that rap tight and he wasn't who, he, who they claimed he was, who he claimed he was because they pushed him so hard in schools. And now that we know that now that we know that our schools are indoctr indoctrination camps, it's a telltale sign that Martin Luther King was not all who he was chalked up to be. Um, I'm going to. Um, how, how would I how would I describe him? I, I can't really. Can, can, would you call him a race baiter, Marlon? Yes. And I, I can't, we yeah, will break down exactly why, but yes. Okay, yeah. good. Cause I'm, I'm struggling with that side of it to call, to go that far, but I'm, I'm open. I'm open to, a, um, I'm open to that. And I, and I want to hear how, how you come to come back. Cause I'm just kind of having turns to that, but I, but honestly, I can't really put a, a name on him except for phony, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Except for phony. And, and, and he's a, a true definition of a sellout. And what's so bad is he was sold to us by mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And we fail for it. And now it's to the point to where I guarantee you, even the, the people that this, we don't have as many people as I, I assume because we change times, but but I'm guaranteeing you that it's going to be more people in this comment that's section hated. Thing mm -hmm. that's hating us for this. Even though we got all the receipts to cover and talk about, to, um, you know, I mean, to, to cover everything we're talking about, people are still going to be mad and hate us. So that just shows you that the indoctrination is heavy and the idolization is jumping off like never before. People are idolizing these people because how is it that you can have something right in your face and you can see it? The receipts are right there and you're still saying, no, not Martin Luther King. Y'all need to leave him alone. Why? Because he was blown up to be this um, Jesus almost. The people look at him like he got. You see the thing where it says, Marlon, somebody said that some little kid said, um, uh, what's his name? Was his name actually? No, not that. Then they asked, "Was uh, who was Martin Luther King?" He said, "Oh, that was he saved my soul, or something like that." Somebody wrote it. In I didn't see story. that one. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, one. I've never, I've never saw that video, but somebody put that up. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. The, the so <laughs> I wanna, I wanna have people read this particular again. His words: "We don't bring up our points of view." Okay. We're just here to bring the information to you and you can still love them if you want uh, or change your mind. Like we had to change our mind. Look, I'm sure Corey was like me. We thought Martin Luther King was up and up because he brought a whole lot of what we thought was good to the table until now. So listen carefully. Okay. His, again, his words. Okay. His words. This is in the letter to his wife, Coretta, by the way, to turn to something more intellectual. I have just completed Bellamy's Looking Backward. It was both stimulating and fascinating. There can be no doubt about it. Bellamy had the insight of a social prophet as well as fact-finding mind to the social scientist. I welcome the book because much of its content is in line with my basic ideas. I imagine you already know that I am much more socialistic in my economic theory, theory than capitalistic. And yet I am not so opposed to capitalism that I have failed to see its relative merits relative. 
It started out with a noble and high motive, viz. to block the trade monopolies of nobles, but like most human systems, it failed victim, fell, I'm assuming that must be fell, victim to the very thing it was revolting against. So today, capitalism has outlived its usefulness. It has brought down about a system that takes necessities from the masses to give luxuries to the classes. So I think Bellamy is right in seeing that gradual decline in capitalism. Now, with that in mind, when he combined himself with the Democratic Party to pass the Civil Rights Act, do you now understand what it actually did adversely to the black American population? He removed black Americans from actually participating properly in capitalism because he hated capitalism. If I can make you dependent on the system itself that I consider better, which is communism, meaning the government is paying for you, then I have now made capitalism obsolete in your mind, hence keeping you a victim to thinking that people want you oppressed. And that's still in effect right now, today, today. on a very large scale. I'm willing to bet you, mm, man, we need to take a survey. I'm, I'm, we, we should take time to take a survey one day. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet you 90 I'm going to go 90, 80% of blacks think they're oppressed. What would you say? At, at this point, probably 70 now. I thanks to Joe Biden, he actually did a good job of making oh, him wake up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to thank Joe Biden a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> a, a little bit. So I would like to see that survey too. Uh, somebody said, did you see any, any evidence of him being a womanizer? All those are in the FBI files, which is why I said I'm not touching that because people may not believe the FBI, but you will believe his own words. It's his words. The FBI might say something about him, but his own words betray him more so than being a womanizer. Yeah. If I can't trust you to preach the gospel you say you're preaching, I can't trust you to do nothing else. I'm sorry. Yeah. Even if, so and, no. and, and, and it's crazy because even if you, you, if you bring up something about the numbers, then they start saying, but them numbers been messed with. But then when they bring up numbers, them numbers right, though. Them numbers right, yeah. Yeah, the numbers you brought up was right. But then when I bring up the numbers, they've been tampered with. So it's hard to... You only tamper with some numbers, though. Yeah, only some. The ones some that we talk about. The one... <laughs> I don't even say nothing no more, man. I'm, you, know, you know what? I'm getting good, Merlin. <laughs> I, I know. You go, I'm learning I know. how to just... Be, because, listen, man, at the end of the day, this is what I, this is what I concluded. Some people have decided that they believe what they believe and they sold on it. I'm oppressed. Um, all white people are racist and that's it. And I love Dr. Martin Luther King, no matter what you say. And I hate D Donald Trump, no matter what I say. That's it. And that's okay. And so, and, that, and it is okay with them yeah. because they got a right to believe what they want to believe. I choose to believe different and I'm choosing lately here to just, you know, I mean, the, the most I'm mostly willing to talk about it is on here. Outside of that, people keep trying to talk to me. I just kind of be quiet and don't say nothing because it's, it's, it's you, get, you find yourself getting caught up in dumb conversations. It's this. Hamster yeah, it, yeah, it just goes. And, and all it does is, is it ruin friendships, it separate families, and it just, it just, <clears throat> and, and, and they still gonna believe what they believe, just like I'm gonna still believe what I believe. So it's, it's sad, man. So it ain't no need in bringing all that up because they ain't gonna believe it no way. Yeah. So, if, if people want to get any evidence, now, now mind you, the FBI does two things. They plant false information and they reveal real information. The way, the way you know which is which is by seeing what's played out in real life. Yeah. Okay? You, you can tell. Now, what you may not like is the truth, but the truth is there. Okay? So he, here's what they said. Um he had a propensity for an orgaic kind of lifestyle, meaning that he liked multiple women. There are records that show that he did, did indeed pay prostitutes to come to his room. Um, the same was also said of Jesse. 
don't let that one that fool fool you either because they were probably all involved in the same thing okay so i can believe that he did that i certainly can especially because there's one receipts checks written by him and stuff so there's that you can call it doctored if you want but the same thing also applied to jesse um secondly like i said before if your mentor was Benjamin Hayes, Benjamin Mays, then I, I could believe that you did it. If that was your mentor, if that's how you want to live, because he was the one that pushed the pro-black movement. He hated white people. Um, the same thing with MLK. This, this content, the character thing was not actually something he believed. It was a social way to get you to grab onto his message if you were on the right. Meanwhile, he was signing on to the people on the left under the guise of Christianity. I hope you know this is how they do it today, too. They sign you on either by comedy, by your heart, or tell you that they're, that God said so. And don't forget about the fear. And the fear. So so now you have you have this, this dichotomy of thought processes that you have to now figure through yourself. And you're obviously, some of the people will go for the one that feels better, one that I can more tangibly hold on to. So the way Malcolm... And the way Martin spoke were two completely different ones, right? But when you hear Martin Luther King speak, more people want to emulate the way he spoke, right? You realize that? <laughs> Why? Because it makes you feel better. It almost feels like he's speaking to weirdly to my heart. He ain't saying nothing. All the stuff he's saying is absolute trash, but you just believe it because it sounds and feels good. Because that particular sound come with an influence. And you see it in preachers all the way today. Yeah, put together by. Same way, same yeah. way. So don't let don't let that fool you. I mean, if you don't want to believe that he was a womanizer, don't. If you don't want to believe that he was a socialist, don't. If you don't want to believe that he was a Marxist, don't. And if you don't believe that he hated capitalism and pushed the civil rights movement to keep black people that he said he was trying to free oppressed, then don't. I'm just telling you that that's exactly what he did. Well, ha have you have you uh, noticed that we have a new? Martin Luther King. Yeah, we do. Up. We do. And now y'all watch this. I'm telling you. You should play it for him. You know what? Uh, let me go get it. You sent it. You sent it to me, didn't you? Yeah, I sent it to you on your, on your phone. Though. You know, you played it for me, but I didn't get to actually play it on my own yet. Because I, I can I send it to you on your messenger so you bring it right up. It's on that woke preacher's clip. Yeah, guys, yeah send, me, so. send, me the, send me send it to my messenger and I can bring it. Yeah, because he will he will let you play it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this guy, man, this guy. You know when when he first and and that 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 Tennessee thing, that Tennessee, all oh, this Tennessee mess jumping off, and and, and again we right back in Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. Um, he um he was speaking, and I didn't know much about it because like I, I was on vacation, bro. You know, so I wasn't really trying to do too much. There you go. But uh, okay, I got it. But um, <laughs> it tripped me out. Because I'm like, man, let me see what's really going on. So I found out whatever, whatever. Okay, that's neither here nor there. But then he was speaking and he had the crowd revved up and he went into this black Jesus stuff. So when he did, I said, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go with the black Jesus now. Jump yeah. Up. Everything is about color, right? Yeah. Now, people say, well, Martin Luther King said you shouldn't be judged by the color of your skin, but the content of your character. If that's the case, then why didn't we judge Martin Luther King by the content of his character? <laughs> What about Obama? Why was why was he judged by, by the color of his skin? Because he was. What about Obama? Same thing. What about uh Kamala? Kamala same, Kamala. same thing. Oh. We didn't judge none of them by the content of their character. If we did, we would never get behind Martin Luther King. Ever. Ever. Or Obama. Ever. Man. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying he practiced, he said one thing, but he didn't practice it. Right. So uh no, he did not mess with white females. It was all black prostitutes, actually. <laughs> that was actually listed. All Negro prostitutes is what he was has a, his affinity, affinity was for. He so at least he kept it. At least he kept it a hundred. He kept. He kept. He, he kept <laughs> it black. Huh? He kept it black. He was. A, he didn't stray from the thought process. So I think that before. Um, yeah, before you play that. <laughs> I'm going to warn you guys, okay? 
gonna <laughs> just a little <laughs> little warning. <laughs> this stuff will make you Listen. your sides will split, but it's also quite blasphemous at the same time. So it's really hard to laugh, but not hard to it's hard to not laugh. And, but it's and, hard to laugh. But it's hard. Okay, so just well, just trust that our laughing is not at what he's saying necessarily, but how? I, I just can't believe it, man. When, when, I like, can't. I, look, this is my first time seeing it, but Merlin played it for me <laughs> a bit ago, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> just wait till you hear who he prays to. Well, but he, here's the thing, and, and, and I think I said this to you already, right? After uh, I, I did see him doing his speech, his 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 first Martin Luther King breakout speech. <laughs> And I, and I said, I said, I said, Merlin, I said, I'm telling you, this dude is going to do something stupid. And he I'm, did. I'm telling you, hands down, he is going to do something stupid. What did he do? OK, he did this. But I have a I have a, a, a my own poll to take. Whose fro looks better? OK, mine. Uh, don't do it. Don't do or it. his. OK. <laughs> no. Okay. Who all has right. more pride I, in their fro is all I'm asking. We so. don't need to ask them. I'm going to be the judge of this today, y'all. Okay. You know, all right. All right. Your fro is better. No, thank you. Good. But there's a but. There's a but. Is this bigger? It, it, not only that, it, it it has a bigger statement. No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let it do the long, man. He prayed to his mother God. Anyway, continue, Mr. Oh, oh my goodness, man. When I, when I tell you, when I tell you this is going to cringe you up, it's going to cringe you up. Le Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, we'll get to him. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to him. All right, let's do it. Turn that volume up, too. Oh, man. Oh, hold up. <sighs> well, y'all, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Would, would you mind going ahead and praying with me now, Mother God, Creator God, loving God, holy God, take this your servant made from dust and connect it with the raw materials of stardust to speak in this moment, to say something that brings forward the word you placed into my heart. I accept my unworthiness for such a task as bold as this, and I seek your guidance as you use me and speak through me to the ancestor preachers who made sermons from hymns moans and groans and spirituals from the bondage of slavery speak now through this your descendant to the black women locked out being abused tormented raped eradicated and yet born a new and distant future in this country and to a young colored boy named me i name you now my great-grandmother anna ruth my great-grandmother flossie my great-grandmother everline my great-grandmother lavinia my grandmother pearson my grandmother gwen my own mother the Kimberly to the preachers who preach before me and will yeah. now to my own daddy Jason, my Paul, Paul, my granddaddy, my uncle, and my auntie before me to you, loving God. Father, mother, sister, brother, sibling, and friend, preach. If it is my voice, I promise I'll lose it for you. If it's my hands, I'll clap them for you. If it's my feet, let them jump praising you. Whatever it is, God, you use it so a word of justice and love might come forward in these moments. This we ask in Jesus' name. Together we say amen. <laughs> you see what you see what Martin Luther King yielded? You see what he yielded? The black progressivism from the pulpit. From the pulpit. You are now gathering at a place where you say God is supposed to be preeminent. And what do you say, Mother God or something? Mother God to Mother invoke God. him as a female and to say that he combined you with stardust and magic powers from your ancestors. That's uh that's amazing. Um I can't you know what, man? I'm gonna tell you something. I cannot believe that anybody is willing to support this guy after hearing that. Anybody, if you support this guy. I ain't gonna say it. Look, you just as hilarious as his fro. If you, <laughs> dude, do you see how he's looking down? He was he wrote it. That's a it, written prayer. He, but he he said it good though, didn't he? He uh, you know why? Uh, wow, well, uh, 
Yeah, he. That's what we're working with, man. That's now, what... y'all say, what does that have to do with Martin? Everything. Everything. He opened the door for this. Everything. He yeah. opened the door for this. And and not, not only that, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something, man. This whole thing was planned. Period. I listen to me. I guarantee it. And then who flies to Nashville immediately after that? Nobody but Kamala. 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 She went to Nashville. Why? Because here's her breakout dance. She get to dance now. Oh, see, they did something racist. And for the record, for the record, from what I know, I think they all should have been suspended. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think they all should have been suspended. I think that it was unfair, but I don't know if it was because they was black and white. I don't know. I don't know if all of them would have been white. One of them would have got off. I don't know. But we can assume all we want to. And that's what we do is we assume. And that assumption, you know what that assumption does? It turns into anger. And once it turns into anger, we're not willing to let it go. At this point, to be truthful with you, and I know this might sound messed up and y'all can get mad if you want to, like you always do, but I don't care. I don't care because me caring about what's the black or white issue is me promoting criminals, promoting crime because this was a, it, it was, it was against the rules. And what we do is we always want to make these standards. And every time it's, it's, it comes down to racism um, to the degree that we want to speak on it, and you and if you ask the question to a, a black person, well, then what is it that white people can do? I I, had, I got an answer one day. I got an answer from somebody one day. I ain't gonna say no names, but I am gonna tell you what they said. I said, so you oppressed, yeah. So what is it that white people can do that black people can't? Go shoot up a whole school and get away with it. You went to shooting a school up. Why does it always have to be related to crime? Hmm. I know why, but I ain't going to tell y'all because it does sound too bad. But that ain't true because one did and he got away with it. He didn't get killed. <clears throat> Just an FYI. Oh, yeah. What about the what about the black people that shot the school up? Yeah, and, the, and also the black kid that shot that kid in the class. He, yeah. he got away with it? Simpkins? Yeah, he's, he, he, oh, yeah. yeah. He actually bonded out too, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he bonded oh, out. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Just a thought, though. I mean, that's that's that that's different. That, that's yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's uh, there's there's one more thing that I forgot to mention while we were talking. Um, for further proof, for too strong to present to the about the communist side of one Martin Luther King Junior. Um, back to the civil rights thing. So, in 1945, the International Labor Defense and the National Federation for Constitutional Liberties. They merged with a group called the National Negro Congress to form the Civil Rights Congress. The Civil Rights Congress was led by a man named William Patterson. William Patterson was a leading known communist. In fact, he was one of the larger known communists at the time. Um, he was also the leader of the Communist Party USA. Just keep that in mind. And this is the same people that Martin Luther King Jr. tag team with to create the Civil Rights Act. Um, he was also a very good and profound follower of Ben Davis, who was elected as the first communist councilman in Harlem, known as Mr. Civil Rights. So if you think civil rights is a thing that will help, let me try and speak like my boy. If you think civil rights is something that you need, maybe you are just mistaken. I don't even feel right. It don't even feel right. Um, yeah, don't don't talk like him. But understand this. <laughs> Civil rights only gives you what the government wants to give you. Okay? Yes. Civil rights are what the government tells you you can have. I hope you understand. It's not them restoring to you anything. It's taking what's natural to you and converting it to a government-issued version of it. And you are sucking it up like it's something nice and sweet and new and wonderful. 
when all they're doing is changing your chains to stockades. You went from having your feet free and your hands tied to your feet tied, hands tied, and your neck in a stockade, and you were happy with it. And they feed you what they want, and they feed you when they want, and you don't ever go free because now you're stuck there. Thank you, Mr. MLK, for that. And then, and then when somebody tell you that you can break the chains loose and get out of them, they tell you, no, we can't because these white folks ain't going to let us. And, and you're a right. coon. And you're a coon and a sellout for telling us that. You delusional. We oppressed. It's because they want to be. My son said, uh, he said they are oppressed. No, no, that matter of fact, that was similar. He said they are oppressed. That's what they want to be. Leave them alone. Let them, let them stay oppressed, man. <laughs> Leave them be. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's pretty bad, man. Pretty doggone bad. So I'll address this because it's good that you brought this up. No reasonable thinking black man wanted to go into a white establishment because we had establishments that were just as good in black communities. The reason MLK was so successful in pushing this narrative that you need to be involved in the white man's world is to try and break down the black community in order to them to curtail themselves to the government. Now hear this. If his whole aim was simply to just break down the barriers of having to, you can't go in there, that's one thing. But by forcing them to have to is a whole different thing. And not just that, you did that at the expense of black businesses. If you think the civil rights movement didn't do anything positive, did something positive to the black community, you lie to yourself. It relegated every black business to the back bench in light of white businesses. You don't see this yet? And, it was an advanced form of slavery. And, and, and let, let's take it, let's put it back up because I want to address that from another angle. But we weren't able to even go now listen to your words i'm gonna show you indoctrination but we weren't able to even go into a restaurant and sit with white people the question is if white people are who we in general say they are why, why do you want to go in a restaurant and sit down with them in the first place it, it makes no sense. See, no. this is this is the problem. Black people feel privileged to be around white people. Because they think the world of white people. But then when you don't want to get up and do for yourself, you blame that on white people. So the problem is back then we couldn't even go into a restaurant. We couldn't even go in a restaurant. But we don't even go in our own restaurants and support them. That's why black restaurants fail all the, the time. time. So instead of us, people. instead of us being focused on not even being able to go sit down with in white restaurants, perhaps that would have been a better deal for black people because then you'll be forced to go sit in the black restaurant. Your own restaurant. Instead of black people sitting down in black restaurants, guess what they're doing? They sitting in white restaurants. And they're not supporting each other because why? Because we hate to see each other do good. Prosper. So we don't even go into our own restaurants, even though we can. And that's a sad fact. <clears throat> it is. It is a sad fact. Now, look, civil rights, and I will keep going back to this because people need to hear it. Civil rights has nothing to do with equality. Civil rights is not about equality, because if it was about equality, then I could choose on my own to not have you in my own restaurant. I can equally say no to you and yes to somebody else or yes to you and no to somebody else. But what they want, what they want is domination of their own rule. Like Corey said, if the white man was that bad, especially back then, why do you want? You just came out of slavery. Hear me out. You just came out. Okay? 160 or 70 years ago. You just came out. You just came out of being beaten, tortured, raped, assassinated by white people. 
And you telling me that a black dude comes around and tells you, go sit and eat with the white man. That's a good thing. That's what you've been wanting this whole time is to just sit with white people and eat with them. Go to their schools. Do you not see what they were trying to tell you and make you do? Now, this is not about white people being bad and black people being good. Hmm. This is about the narrative being pushed to you that one is and one isn't. But if it was the truth, you would not want to push rules to incorporate yourself with them, like at all. In fact, you would be pushing for more rules to separate yourself from them completely That's and right. prove to them that you're better That's right. and can thrive, thrive without them. But no, no, you got people like MLK that comes to tell you, yo, you know, we know, you know, we need, we need to get more of their stuff so that we can be more like them. Yep. And you know what you end up becoming? Just like slave masters. Why, why do I say that? Because you kill your own. You do just like slave masters did. You don't want somebody coming to tell on you, you kill them. You don't see how you've been, you've been, you created your own worst enemy. You allowed your own people to do this to you. The white man didn't do this. Martin Luther King did this on his own accord because he became a Marxist. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of equality is not equal. It is not. The whole idea was to try and create a whole new vessel for oppression for you. And you, you, you gave in. Some of us broke free. But a lot of you gave in. You gave into the narrative that somehow what he said was true. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. If you were that, if you're that hateful of them, have nothing to do with them. And at the same time, don't ask them to free you because if you're free, then stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if, if they are who they say you are, why do you want to sit down with them? I don't think that about white people. I love white people. I'm a cool now, y'all. I watch this. Ask me, Jesse Lee me, brother, please. What's that? Jesse Lee me. Do you love, <laughs> do you love white people? I love all people. Do you love white people? I love all people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but that's not the question. I mean, I'm slow and I'm black, so I, I need you to know. Uh, do you love white people? Okay. I love white people. It's okay, okay to say that, that everybody. That's better. Yeah, that's okay. And I love black people. Maybe we can get all the white people to say, I love white people, and get all the white people to say, I love black people. <laughs> and don't say, I don't see color. Don't say that. Don't say you don't see color, because you do. It's disrespectful to say you don't see color, because God made us like this for a reason. Might not understand what it is, but it's it's a reason. Okay, Last so we question, see. Corey. Last thing. Wrong. There should not be a black business labeled for just. Uh, hold on. Wrong. There should not be black business labeled just for black business deals. White business owner use American business. How you view the surrounding is your own take. Additionally, you cannot use a sign stating only white or only black customers, except can inform customers that services can be refused. I gotta read that again. Let me read it. I'm gonna read it out loud. I mean, to myself this time. To yourself, yeah. 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 I'll let you give your take first. White business owners use American business. How you view the surrounding is your I don't even know what she's talking about. She's saying there should not be a label on any of the businesses, black or white. But I'm saying it doesn't matter. They have the right to do that. This is a free country. Yeah, yeah, they, they do have a right to do that. I mean, no shirt, no service, no shoes, no service. They can do that, right? <laughs> is that discrimination against people who don't have shoes and shirts? That's different. Listen, um, what should be and what is, is, you know, it's two different things and it's two different conversations. I think people have a right to promote their business how they want to. Exactly how they if, want to. If we want to promote this as a black podcast, I think that we should be able to do that. And there's not, a, it, I don't see a problem with that. The problem with it is when you take it and you say, that's not a good podcast because they black, or that's a good podcast because they black. And, and, I, and I'll say it, I'll admit it. I've said it. And I've told Merlin, I said, man, listen, I believe, I'm finna say it, Merlin. I believe some of these people were following us simply because we black and they think we hate black people. And I knew these, who these people were because we specifically did topics on purpose 
that would run them off. And what they do, what they do, Merlin? Run off. They ran off. So it's it's real. You know what I'm saying? We see color. We see color. And it's okay to see color. And it's disrespectful and it's a lie to say that you don't. Why would you say that you don't see something that God made me? God made me look this way. Then you're going to say you don't see it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> if I run a tuxedo shop, okay, all I do is custom made tuxedos. And I am a certain way. And I have a certain type of clientele I'm trying to bring in. Okay. Listen carefully. I am looking for a certain type of clientele. In comes a black individual dressed like Lil Wayne. Tats all up and down his body, piercings and just whoo. Okay. Black. Dressed like a gangbanger, pants around his kneecaps. You know, the traditional, stereotypical, if you want to call it, hoodlum. <laughs> Steps into my establishment. And I say, whoa, 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 buddy. Uh, nah, we good. But I got money. Good for you. But nah. You know why? I don't want who I want shopping here seeing you in my store. Then he turns around, leaves, goes to the media and said, he turned me away because I'm black. Now hear me out. Did he turn him away because he's black? Or did he turn him away because of what his look said to the rest of the people in my store? No, I'm glad you asked me that. I'm going to just, just take that question and act mm -hmm. like he was talking to me mm -hmm. so I can answer it, please. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on who you're asking. If I'm black... Yeah, he turned him away because he's black. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Does that's... that affect the truth of why he turned him away? No. Okay. <laughs> so if I say at the time, I don't want black people in my restaurant because of the connotation that was applied to black people back then. And trust me, they made a really good deal of selling black people as degenerates and animalistic. They sold it really good. So even people who were not necessarily racist bought it because that's all they saw. Kind of like today how people view Christians, but that's besides the point. Um, so don't tell me that you can't because you should be able to discriminate who comes into your restaurant, who comes into your place. The same way I discriminate who comes into my home. It's the exact same thing. That would be true freedom. So what you're telling me is you don't believe in, in freedom. You believe in a version of censorship. Right. OK. Now, is what I'm practicing hurting the other person? Is by me telling him he can't come into my restaurant hurting him? No, it shouldn't. It's not because he just can't eat my food. He can't pay me his money. I'm losing out on revenue, not him losing out on food, because you know what? There's another place that will take him that will feed him the same food. So to, to me, that's not racism to me. That's and, and you, know, you know, that's Marlon. As I sit here and think about it, I think that I would prefer restaurants to be able to say, you can't come in here because you're black. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Now I know you don't want me there. See, I've walked in restaurants plenty of times and wondered, was I welcome? And then you, all you can come up with is, I don't know, because by law, they can't tell me that. So if I'm not welcome, they might not want to serve me right. They might want to you know, Get my food, spit my food, you know, anything, right? Drop it on the floor, rub it on the toilet, pick it up, put it on the bun. I don't know. But if they can tell me, I don't want you here because you black, that would probably serve me better. Then instead of complaining about white people not wanting me in a restaurant and all this, I can go to a black restaurant that wants me there. And then we can quit complaining about, we ain't got no money because we can keep our money in our own neighborhoods. That's what you want. So then why don't you do it? Hmm. But what you do is the minute you get some money, when taxes came, when taxes come, the PPP loans, I go to the white mall. You know, we got a mall owned by white people mm -hmm. and it's full of black people spending money. <laughs> Talking about we oppressed. Look, 
This gets so much better. Uh oh. Here we go. <laughs> Look, listen. What is so valuable at that store that you should sue for them profiling you at all? Let just just hear me out. What can that store offer you that no other store can that you have to sue them for your choice to want to go to somebody's store that don't want you there? Please explain that to me. If they don't want you there, they tell you this outright. Don't come in my store. I don't want to serve you. You somehow find a way to get in there after they tell you they don't want you in there. Somehow you think magically because you get the right to go in there, they just going to treat you beautifully because law. And then you get mad because they fulfill what they told you to begin with. I don't like you. Like nothing about you I like. So nope. why are you coming in my store? Now you force me to, I'm going to make you eat crap. And are you angry at me because I told you I hate you? Bro, I told you I hate you. How is it surprising to you? Now you're going to sue me because I hate you. How dumb is that? Like, that is the dumbest thing ever. I'm not going to make myself a nuisance to somebody who hates me. I'm going to stay away from them because I'm smarter than that. For my mental health and my safety, I'm not going to mess with somebody that hates me. Nor am I going to try and force them to love me. When I have supposedly 43 million other people that are supposed to love me. And they have stores just as good, if not better, because they got seasoning in their food. <laughs> and they got fried chicken. You want to be stereotypical about it. They have all the stuff that my culture actually loves in that store. I'm going to leave that to go to a white store because they hate me just to eat there. You dumb. You deserve to be pooped on. You deserve to get your food messed with because you dumb. You do not go to a lion's den wearing a suit of meat and then tell a lion, don't eat me. I'm just here to visit. You are, you are clowns for doing that. And then when you get mauled by the lion and you walk out with one arm, you'll be like, sue the lion. He ate me. Yeah, dummy, because you walk in with a suit of meat on you. And lions don't like that. They think it's food. And it says on this, don't go into the lion's cage. You're going to get eat up. You can't just turn around and sue. And if you genuinely believe that white people are that racist, why do you want anything to do with them? That's a stupid, mentally inaccurate statement to make. And you can't be possibly, can't possibly be thinking logically with that. I'm sorry. No, you deserve it. Plain and simple, you deserve it. I got, I got another one. Um, the white people are so racist. They so low down. They so this, they so that. But we raise our kids to be athletes to go to their white schools. And then when they do, we get on TV and we show the clippings of them signing the contract. The contract. To go to the... Well, it got to be a um, what's it and called? then the white teams. Yeah, you got to go play for the white teams. To, to make um, the white man money. Yeah, but that's so that's different. But you oppressed. Yeah, so you so you it told your kids to sign up to go to the plantation. Yeah, that's how stupid they really are. You said they racist mm -hmm. and they hate us. Mm -hmm. So why do you allow the white coach or the white recruiter to come to your house, shake your hand? And make you feel like a million bucks because he told you your son or your daughter get to go to their school. How now, just though? for the record, I see nothing wrong with your kids going to college on a sports scholarship. In fact, I told my kids I'm not paying for college so they can figure it out. Whether it's academic or sports, I will support them, but I'm not paying a tuition for college because I don't think it's worth it. But if they do, that's fine. Figure it, figure it out and I'll support you and I'll help you. And I hope that they get sports scholarships or whatever to go to the white schools. That's awesome for them. Awesome. Right. But if I thought white people were devils and racist, I would say ain't no way in the world. I had to tell one guy his, his kid went to school on football. So I just kind of threw him a little hint, a little, a little quick one. Right. I said, so why didn't you send them to the HBCU college? I'm sure if the colleges that, you know, I ain't going to say the college, the college he went to, I'm sure if they wanted him, he can go to any HBCU. Ah, that's different. I get it. Yes, yeah, yeah, see, it's, it's always racist until it's time to, to benefit from it. So that's called a sellout. Yeah. Okay, I said the last one, but I lied. Okay. So basically, you're saying we should be happy with racist attitudes. Now, look, Jason, you might be new. I understand that. And you may not understand what we're saying. So let me clarify for you. No, Jason's new. 
<laughs> he has to be. But I'm, I'm gonna make it. You see, I'm no, not help him out. Help him yeah, out. Please. I'll help him out. All right. If I know someone is racist, you know what I can do? Avoid them. There are 320 million people in this country. And I will bet you money that no more than 25% of them are naturally disgusting racist. No more than 25%. Which leaves me with a metric ton of people to interact with that probably have way more to offer me than those 25%. But to constantly harp on the 25% as though they're the ones dictating my future is making you a dummy. A dummy. Be because if there are black people that have made it in this country without being a sports person and have a business mind or a mathematics mind or a scientific mind and they can make millions, racism is not the issue keeping people from thriving in this country. Do not hand me that nonsense. And yes, I can be happy with people and their racist attitude because they don't affect me because I don't have to give them the time of day. It really is that simple. I'm a, I, it something. may not. It may not be. It may not be that simple. I guess. Let, well, no, it's that simple. But let me let me break some fir down first before I answer. Respond to this. First of all, I think that's a fake page. That's. It's, I think it's a fake page. Somebody want to pick to get certain ads because they they want to hide behind a keyboard. Yeah, they want to hide behind a keyboard and ask questions that they think we don't have answers to. So let me help you out here. Uh, so are you basically saying we should just be happy with racist attitudes? Come on, do better than that. First of all, we don't basically say things. We say them. Yeah. Very, <laughs> clear. very clear about what we say. We, say we, don't basically uh, say. Yeah, we don't basically say, we. you know, maybe every now and then we might basically say something. But, but basically, we're generally direct. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing to your answer is, no, we're not saying that you should uh, just be happy with racist attitudes. We're saying that you shouldn't care. Yeah. You should not care to the point to where it affects your behavior, to where it have you doing things you normally wouldn't do or shouldn't do. You should not care to the point to where you feel oppressed or depressed. You should not care that much. Because how can another man have that much control over your life or your mind? Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. <clears throat> Ask yourself. Really. As a man, as a man, as a man, how does it feel to know that another man got that much control over your mind or your body or your spirit? How do you feel about that? Mm-mm-mm. How you feel? Ponder, ponder, smoke on it, whatever you got to do, figure it out. Yeah. And then next time you come back, just say your real name. It's okay. And uh, for the ones that I said specifically profiling, not racism, um, what are you profiling based on? Don't be dumb. Come on now. You want to try and weed through words with me? It ain't going to work. Not on this page. <laughs> profiling versus racism. What are they profiling based on? Just because... Look, not everybody is as slow as the people that you surround yourself with. That might be you. You might surround yourself with a lot of brain dead aneurysm in encumbered people, but, but not here. If you are profiling somebody, there has to be a basis by which you are profiling. You are dumb to think that race doesn't play into it. And when you file the racism claim or the, the profiling claim, they're going to ask you based on what? And you're going to have to say either race or something else. And if it's something other than race, they can get away with it, period. Unless you can prove you handicapped or something. So they're profiling based on something. So you can't split racism from profiling if we're talking about this particular topic. And it was directly about white businesses and black businesses. You want to incorporate all of the world's troubles into one topic because you can't stay on topic. I get that's why, because you can't make your case based on the topic. You got to bring Frankie, Johnny and Cicely's problems into this. We're not talking about them. We are not talking about them. Racism isn't the problem in America. Stupidity is. 
Stupidity is the biggest problem here. We have been sold a bag of goods since the, 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 the abolition of slavery. And the bag of goods is that we need the same people that enslaved us to help us to be free. Meanwhile, there were people who were already not slave owners helping us to be free, and we ignored them. Now, they're the ones that we call racist, while we call the slave owners our friends. You want proof? Look at Tennessee. The slave owner was their buddy while they were doing all their stupid crap in the, in the, in the, on the house floor. Right? She with them. Yeah, go, Negro man, go. And then she'd be like, I, I, I wasn't with them. It wasn't me. You muted. It wasn't me. Wasn't me. Hey, hey, you can make sure you expel them. I was just, I was just there trying to be their friend, and they just went overboard. <laughs> and then after they get suspended or expelled, then she's still supporting them. Yeah. Come on, pump your fist. Yeah, just <laughs> pump you being dumb. Yay. And then, and then they wrong. Except for the one that helped. Yeah. Helped you get in there. You see how it work? You see how your oh, white allies yeah. work? Okay. Yeah. Just thought I'd let you know. Yeah. That's how your white allies work. The people that are the slave owners are your friends. And then you know, and you know what everybody doing? I guarantee you. Hey, that white lady stood up for them. See, she real. We, <laughs> we need more of them. <laughs> Listen, the white lady walked in there with them. With them. And, and probably egged them, out them. <laughs> egged them on. Like she's still doing. That's right. They treat them so different than me. Oh, do you see what's going on here? You've been set up, and now you're up there, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Quite, Quite a fro. With a fro. With a fro. With a fro. Talking about Mother God. Mother God. Do y'all see? Come on, man. If you believed in this clown at first, when he went up in the, on that stage and disrespected your father, you should be done with him. It should be done. Look, a lot of y'all, if I say your mammy or your mama, you're done with me. Probably shoot me. Kill me. But because I got a fro with the, hmm. with the fist jumping off, I can say, you know, God is a woman. Called him a homosexual. You called him a, a sissy is what you called him. My father. And you think I'm going to support you in any way? You, you tripping. Not going to happen. But good luck to the people that do. I can't support that. I don't trust nothing he got going on. I don't want nothing to do with nothing he got going on. He disrespected my father. If you disrespect my wife or my kids, I'm done with you. And it should be 10 times that when you disrespect my father. Done. Hey, I rest my peace on that one. Same here. Yeah. Um, listen, this is our new time. Please like, share, and subscribe. I see we did have some, we didn't have our normal crowd, but we had some new people, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. So we really appreciate all the love, all the support for truth. We are truth followers. We don't, we don't get into the, we follow you because you black. Uh, we ain't going to do a show on you because you black, because uh, you white. Look, it is what it is and when you follow the spirit of god you don't have to think about those things you just follow and it's easy and it's simple but everybody want to make life so difficult and want everything to be so deep rabbit holes and you know all that and that's cool it's cool to go down rabbit holes and look and find and see things it's interesting and we can learn from those things but they are not 100 percent necessary for life yeah they're not life your salvation is not in a rabbit hole your salvation is not in calling white people racist your salvation is not in calling black people stupid your salvation is with god just remember that keep it simple live life go to heaven okay thanks for listening but our time is up and do yourself a way a favor Wake up before you go to sleep. Peace. We out of chat.